Welcome to the virtual 2020 IPAC Unity Forum. We will have a Q&A with the candidates one question at a time. What is the realistic solution to bring peace in the Middle East? And how would you position America to be an impartial intermediary to help resolve the conflict? Hi, my name is Brenda Lopez Romero, and I'm running to be your next Congresswoman for the 7th. My background in national security and foreign policy issues is vitally important as we continue to deal with the conflict involved in the Middle East and how can the United States collaborate with international organizations and important key holders of the Middle East to ensure that we come to a resolution. Of course, I understand the intricacies of this issue, which is why I understand there is not a one-size-fit-all solution and that this will take ongoing work and collaboration amongst multiple nation states and also individual people working and advocating for peace in the Middle East. One of the first steps that we can continue to do is open up the renegotiation with equal partnerships with those that live in the region to actually have a say in the negotiation process for a two-state solution. In addition to that, we need to ensure that any involvement that the United States continues to have has a focus on diplomacy and development first to ensure that we help work alongside our allies and colleagues in the Middle East to ensure that they determine their path to towards their future and the type of leadership, the type of constitutional doctrine they want to have, and also the type of society that where they live in order to protect their cultural identity, but also protect the human rights that are alien inalienable in each individual that lives here in the world. I strongly support a two-state solution to resolving the Israeli and Palestinian conflict. We need to recognize that both the Israeli people and the Palestinian people ultimately want the same thing, which is security and economic opportunity and prosperity for themselves and for their children. The president moved the embassy to Jerusalem, which was provocative and undermined the United States role as an honest broker uh, to resolving the conflict. The president has also supported Netanyahu as he has proposed to annex portions of the West Bank. And the president has cut off humanitarian assistance to the Palestinian people. We need to restore assistance to the Palestinian people and we need to restore the United States role as an honest broker to help open the door for both parties to, to get to a peaceful and long-lasting solution in the Middle East. Fifth question is, what is the realistic solution to bring peace in the Middle East? And how would you position America to be an impartial intermediary to help resol resolve the conflict? So the only realistic solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict is a two-state solution. However, this solution requires a firm foundation of trust, not just between the Palestinians and the Israelis, but also trust in the United States as an impartial mediator. As a member of Congress, I would support legislation that is designed to return us to that position through holding Israel to the same standard as the Palestinians. Our unconditional aid to the Israelis has allowed them to act without regard to the interests of regional peace. And to that end, the United States should return to the position held by every administration prior to Donald Trump and deem the settlements illegal under international law. Additionally, Devastating and frequent attacks by Israel on targets, uh, terrorist targets hiding in civilian populations in the occupied territories have only served to embolden extremist elements among the Palestinians without improving regional security. We should ensure that our support of Israel in the form of military aid is conditional on the suspension of settlement activity and the halting of airstrikes against civilians. The United States must further ensure that Palestinians have the capacity to uh, ensure control of their own extremist factions. And this can only be accomplished through increasing their autonomy from Israel and supporting their population's welfare. And to that end, the con uh, Congress should move to reinstate aid to the Palestinians and increase our cooperation at the grassroots level, directing additional resources to the occupied territories through both international organizations like the UN and domestic agency like USA USAID. We can encourage that Palestinians to see the U.S. as a benefactor rather than an enemy of their national aspirations. 
When it comes to Israel and Palestine, we must continue to work towards a two-state solution and a peace agreement that recognizes the humanity of all parties. That has been the position of presidents from both parties for decades. And I will encourage my colleagues in Congress and the next president to pursue that objective. It is also increasingly clear that military actions cannot be our only strategy in the Middle East. I support the bipartisan efforts of the United States Senate to invoke the War Powers Act and end American involvement in the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. Our priority across the board should be promoting our historic values of democracy, stability, and human rights. America must be the bulwark that pushes back against dangerous and divisive leaders wherever they may be. As for Middle East, it is a very delicate issue for all of us, but those who are involved emotionally and physically in that area and outside that area, we should recognize that Judaism, Christianity, and Islam comes from the same source, same Almighty One Creator. So we have to come together with understanding and explore each other philosophy, way of living, way of thinking, and come to a peaceful coexistence. We cannot fight forever because we are the Abrahamic faith and we believe on one creator, we believe on Prophet Ibrahim, we believe on Prophet Moses, we believe on Prophet Jesus, we believe on Prophet Muhammad. So if we try to to work together as a team, we can find a common ground where we can live peacefully. A total peace, a total complete peace can be offered. We can divide the land three equal parts between the Jewish, Christians and the Muslim and open the border for trade between countries. We can develop a railroad economy running from Jerusalem to Dhaka, from there, we can extend it to Guangzhou, China. In that way, 4 billion human beings will be served economically and they will have a good living and a very peaceful living. So the destination, the future of that part of the world and as a world as a whole depend on us. Are we willing to compromise? Today, in the era of nanotechnology and easy communication, borders are meaningless. If we need something, we do trading through the model of economic model of peace and peace by trade. That will give plenty for everybody. And if we need something, we don't have to fight over it. And as I said, borders are obsolete. We can communicate with each other with a cell phone, with email, over the internet in so many ways. So if we need something, we just uh, trade and we don't have to fight over anything. Land borders are obsolete. All we have to do is come together, cooperate, and cultivate our land and enjoy the future for self, for our children, and for our grandchildren. Thank you so much. God bless America.